Hey everybody. Welcome in, welcome in, welcome in. Um, I can't go to sleep until I release what God has told me to release. And I'm going to do a separate video, but I needed to do a live um, so I can reach everybody at one time. Um, because God has been speaking to me. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> God has been speaking to me. And tonight he says that it has to be released because some things are about to happen in people's lives. And some people's lives are going to change dramatically and some subtly. Um, but God is going to be doing a lot for his children in the next coming month. And before the end of this month is over, um, he's going to just show who he is and who you are to him and all of these things. So um, he had me in Genesis and just Genesis 12. I read pretty much the beginning of Genesis um, just a minute ago just because I wanted to make sure that this is what he was telling me that he wanted me to do. So um, if you're joining in, I'm going to be in Genesis 12. And it's a message here. And then I have some definitions. And I'm just going to just let God do what he does best. So Holy Spirit, you're welcome here. Wisdom, you're welcome here. Come dwell with us as we dwell with you. Come just sit here and just listen. Just be eavesdropping in on our conversations, God. Because we're going to talk about you. And we're going to honor you. And we're going to lift your name on high. And it's in your mighty name we pray, Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Um... So, in Genesis 12, it talks about Abraham. And we know a lot of things about Abraham. But um, Abraham had a lot of descendants. And remember, um, if you grew up, I don't know if this is just a, a down south thing or if it's just whatever. But it was like, Father Abraham had many sons. Many sons have Father Abraham. I am one of them, and so are you. So let's just praise the Lord. So um, that's what was on my mind. So um, yeah, I'm exhausted, but I have to get this out. That's why I'm just like really mellow. <laughs> um, in Genesis 12, it says, 12, 1, it says, Now the Lord had said unto Abram, Get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred, and from thy father's house unto a land that I will show thee. So it says, Now the Lord said unto Abraham, Get thee out of thy country, and from thy kindred, and from thy father's house, unto a land that I will show you. So God has given Abraham very specific instructions. Even though the instructions was kind of vague, God was very direct when he said it. He said, Abram. Get thee out of the country, so go. God is going to send some people to go places, go out of their hometown, go out of the country, go out of the city, go wherever God tells you to go. God says, get thee out of the country. Get thee from thy kindred. So what is kindred? Because it's going to make sense, and I need to give you the definition of that because it's going to make sense on how you have to be very obedient when God tells you to do something. So kindred is one's family and relations. And then it goes down to your kindred are your family and all the people who are related to you. Kindred things are similar to each other. So God says to leave your kindred, your family's house, your father's house, and, and just to go out of the country. So he gave Abram, Abram specific instruction. He gave him... And then he said, um, and then go to a land that I will show you. So I can only imagine Abram, okay, God, you tell me to get up and leave. Okay, where am I going? God, I don't have a destination. God, I'm going to do what you say, but what I'm just going to do, start walking? Like, what I'm going to do, just start walking? Yes. Yes. When you walk by faith and not sight, you're going to walk blindly into a lot of things. So he gave him instructions. And it's one word that just stands out because this is where obedience is better. 
Obedience is better than sacrifice, and obedience to the T matters. So let me tell you this. Let me keep going. Genesis 12, 2. And I will make thee a great nation, and I will bless thee, and I will make their name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. So God is telling him what I'm going to do when you follow what I tell you to do. I will bless you. I will make your name great. You will be a great nation. You will be a, um, you should be a blessing. God is letting him know all the rewards that is going to come when he be obedient to him. Remember, obedience is better than sacrifice. And God is saying, when you obey me, I will make your name great. I will make your name a great nation. I will bless you. I will make it great. And you shall be a blessing. God is just saying that just because of your obedience alone, this is what's going to happen. God gave him specific instructions. And he said, I will make of thee a great nation, and I will bless thee, and thy name, and I will make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. This is what you're going to get when you do what God asks you to do. Understand, the humble and the meek shall inherit the earth. That's what that's your portion already. We all have a hand that we're about to be dealt. God has an inheritance for us that is ours. He's just trying to see if we're going to be obedient enough to do what he's asking us to do. Genesis 12, 3. And I will bless them that bless thee and curse them that curse thee. And in the um, in, in thee shall be um, families of the earth and be blessed. I don't know why I just thought it. Three, I'm going to read it again. And I will bless them that bless thee and curse those that curse thee. And these shall know that um, the families of the earth will be blessed. So God is saying, whoever is for you, I'll be for you and for them. And whoever is against you, I'll be against them. I will curse them. Whoever is wishing evil on you and putting all these voodoo, whatever, hoodoo, doo-doo-doos, whatever. And God is like, I'm going to curse those who curse you. See, the battle isn't theirs. And the battle isn't even yours. When they wage war with you, they're waging war with the kingdom of heaven. So they thinking they just arguing with you, but baby, they arguing with God. And God says, that's mine. Give it here. Whoever cursed you, I shall curse. But whoever blessed you, I will bless. So people that's been sowing into your life, whether it's just listening to you, whether it's just, you know, and encouraging you being an inspiration to you god said i will bless those people i will bless any and everybody that's been on your mission anybody that's been helping you succeed they're gonna get their portion they're gonna get their portion so it said so abram departed and as the lord had spoken unto him and lot went with him mm. get this what did god say Let's go back to obedience because we can't do what we want to do because we want to do it because we're afraid of being alone. God gave him specific instructions. He said, now the Lord said unto Abram, get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred. Kindred is relation, people of family, relationship, people that are close to you and like, uh, um, and like you. It says, from thy kindred and from thy father's house unto a land that I shall show you. Now, when you go down to four, it said, so Abraham departed. He did what God said, as the Lord had, as the Lord had spoken to him, and Lot went with him. Lot was his brother. And um, Abraham took his wife and Lot, his brother's son. So he took his nephew with him. God said, leave Leave it. You have to leave from thy kindred. He still took his brother's son, which was his nephew, with him. So he did something, what he said, but he didn't do it all. He had a little razzle-dazzle to himself. And we all know what happened to Lot over there in Sodom and Gomorrah and how his lineage was because they were just doing what they wanted to do, not what God told them to do. God gave them very, gave Abram very strict instructions. But when you're afraid of being alone, when you're afraid of solitude, and when you're afraid of being, you know, being how God wants you to be, you'll settle for anything. 
You'll settle for anything and you'll take people that mean you no good with you. Although it's your brother's brother, um, your brother's son, your nephew, it doesn't mean that he's supposed to be with you in this season. God is saying that he is removing a lot of people from around you and there's nothing that you can do about it. There's nothing that you can do about it. Absolutely nothing. Lot wasn't supposed to go. If you go to Genesis 12, verse 1, you're going to see that Lot was not supposed to go. Lot was, in fact, the very thing that God told him not to take. And he said to go away from, go away from your kindred. But he went and got his kindred and brought him with him because surely God didn't say not you. No, God did say that. God said what he said. And it said, Abram took Sarai, his wife, and Lot, his brother's son, and all the substance that they had gathered, and the souls that they had gotten in Harad, in Harad, and they went forth in the land of Canaan, and into the land of Canaan they came. And Abram passed through the land unto the place of Sh Shehem, unto the plain of Moriah. And the Canaanites was, um, was then in the land. And the Lord appeared to Abram and said, Unto thy seed will I give this land, and they are um and they built and him an altar unto the Lord who appeared to him. But if you go back up to six, it said Abram passed through a through the land unto the place of Shechem, unto the plain of Moriah, and the Canaanites was then in the land. So who was in the land that God said He was about to give Abram? The Canaanites, they were in a land. So not only did God give him what other people already occupied, he gave him he gave him what he wanted. So it just means that although you might see an obstacle in your way, the obstacle when God is there is not an obstacle at all. God don't care who is in the land. When God tells people to move, they better move. Because God will move, give you the option or he'll come do it himself. And there's nothing that you can do about it. Nothing. Said the Lord appeared to Abram and said, Unto thee I will give this land. So I wonder what the people was thinking. Like, we live in here. You tell me what you finna give this man our land. Well, what we gonna do? What we gonna do? Hmm. That ain't for him to worry about. It's for him to be obedient. And the Lord, uh, and they built an altar unto the Lord who appeared unto them. And he removed. Uh, he removed from thence unto a mountain of the east of Bethel and pitched his tent, having Bethel on the west and high on the east. There, um, and there he built an altar to the Lord and called upon the name of the Lord. So he's paying homage to God right now. God has done so much for him. And he, you know, built the altar. He stayed up all day and night. He built the altar and he began to cry out to God. And Abram journeyed, going on still to the south. And there was a famine in the land. And Abram went into, down into Egypt to sojourn there. For the famine was, um, was grievous in the land. And it came to pass when he came near to the Egypt, into Egypt, that he said unto Sarai, his wife, Behold now, I know that thou art a fair woman to look upon. So he gets to Egypt and he gets scared. He gets to Egypt and he gets scared. And so he's telling his wife, like, you know that you're beautiful. Because his wife was, like, one of the prettiest women back then. Like, he was like, you know that, that you're really beautiful. And so he was just, like, getting ready to come up with a proposition for her because of her beauty. And the Egyptians were too great for him by himself. It says, therefore it shall come to pass when the Egyptians shall see thee, see thee they, shall say this, they shall say, this is his wife, and they will kill me. But they will save, um, save thee alive. So basically, he came up with a game plan to tell her to say that I'm not, you're not my wife, um, because if they see you and they see the beauty that you carry, they're gonna kill me and take you for yourself, for themselves. Do you know how beautiful this woman had to be for him to denounce his wife in the presence of her and his enemies, and to say that oh, this is just my sister, not my wife? That he was that scared. Be careful who you make a bed with. Okay. And it said, um, 15, the princes of Pharaoh also saw her and commanded her before Pharaoh. And the woman was taken to Pharaoh's house. 
and he entered um and he in, and he in threatened um I entreated I'm sorry Abraham well for her for her sake and he has sheep oxen and a um I can't say that word and his maid servants and she had camels and the Lord plagued Pharaoh and his house with great plagues because of Sarai Abram's wife so you're not supposed to covet someone's wife you're not supposed to sleep with someone else's husband or wife you're not supposed to be an adulterer period proverbs talks very strong about that so since they got his wife they got abram's wife sarai and they took her for themselves they took her to pharaoh and all of a sudden plagues start coming in their lives and they don't understand what's going on but it says in 17 genesis um 12 17 it says and the lord plagued pharaoh and his house with great plagues because of sarai's um sarai abram's wife and pharaoh called um abram and said what is this that thou has done to me why did thou why did this thou um tell me that she was thy wife so all of these things are happening and Pharaoh is like, I'm not dumb. It only started happening when you and your sister came. Who is this woman to you? So he had to tell him, like, you know, that's my wife. Like, that's my wife. And God don't play when it comes to that. God don't play when it comes to covering your neighbor's things and covering your neighbor's wife and your friend's wife and, you know, just sleeping with your man, your, your friend's husband and all these things. God ain't sitting idly by and watching that. One, you're not going to keep hurting God's people. I don't know why people think that they can get away with hurting God's children. You can never win. You won't win like that, bro. Like, you won't. So, um, 19, it says, why thou sayest she's my sister? So I might have taken her to be my wife. Now, therefore, behold, thy wife, take her and go away. And Pharaoh commanded his men concerning him, and they sent him away and his wife. So I'm going to leave it right there for right now because my eyes are just so low. I'm so tired. Yeah, I'm so tired. But Abram deceived Pharaoh. But Pharaoh, he knew who Pharaoh was. And lo and behold, Pharaoh quickly came and was like, I'm going to take her for myself. And But then the plague started coming on and he had to release him. How many women is like, I can take your man, I can take your husband, da 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 And then their life start going down the drain. And it's only when they release their husband back to their wife, their life start changing. And the same with men. You sleep with these married women and all of a sudden your life going down the drain because you're not supposed to be messed with that person's wife. Period. Period. That is the one thing that God does not play about the most. The most. And furthermore, if they do it with you, you don't think they're going to do it with um, with anyone? If you're not the only one. I'm sorry, newsflash, you're not the only one. What they did to others, they will do to you quicker because they see that you have a weak spot for them. And weakness to the devil is, uh, oh my gosh, it's just like gold. It's like liquid gold. So anyway, yeah, I'm so done. <laughs> anyway. God is saying that I will fight the battles for you. You only have to be still. Be still and know that I am God. He didn't have to go fight Pharaoh. Pharaoh released his wife because he can't hold on to something that is not his. He immediately gave him his wife back. And as I'm speaking, God is saying a lot of things have been taken from you unjustly. And you're about to get it back. You're about to get everything that the enemy has stolen from you. You're about to get it back. And I think that's the reason why God really wanted me to focus in on this message. Because God is saying you are about to get back what they have taken from you. I don't care what the enemy think that it stole. God is saying you're going to get it back. And I'm going to add a little razzle dazzle, a little wild eye magic on that bad boy because you waited so long. You're about to get double portion and you're about to get it right in the presence of your enemies. Right in the presence of your enemies. So anyway, I'm getting ready to sign off, but I'm going to leave it like this. Oh, sorry. If God tells you to go, go. If God tells you to leave something, leave it. Don't say, God, why? God, just let it go. God will show you why when he's ready to show you why. And your mouth going to be dropped open. Because you never seen them coming. You never seen them coming. 
That's why God just removes people silently from your life. And you want closure, but God says that closure could be your deathbed. I can't let that happen. I can't let that happen. Not on my watch. I'm a good father. So anyway, I love you guys. And um, have a great, 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 great night. I'll try to go live again tomorrow. But right now, your girl is tired. Your girl is tired but i gotta be obedient and god is saying that this word is specifically for someone who just need a little bit of encouragement and he's saying that he still is here he still hears you but he needs you to be obedient and follow instructions to a t okay i love you all and um have a good night